Hello there, YouTubers. Mike Martins here from the Mike Martins channel. Guys, today is going to be a very special episode of The World is in a Buyer's Market. Yes, we're seeing articles from New Zealand, Australia, United Kingdom, United States of America, and Canada. The entire Commonwealth is in a buyer's market. So, let's take a look at some of these locations and places. Are we in a buyer's market, or is it just pent up... Uh, is is the um, media back at it again, massaging sideliners who have been waiting on the sideline to buy and get into their first property? Is it a falling knife? Our property still severely overpriced. Let's look at the entire Commonwealth and take a look and analyze. Okay, guys, Seattle's housing market seeing signs of strong shift into buyer's favor, report says. So we've been following here on my channel the Seattle housing market after Vancouver put in the foreign buyer's tax in 2017, early 2017. A lot of people moved down to Seattle and a lot of people, uh, investors moved east to Toronto. So and pent, pent up um, the, the housing crises in other cities. So Seattle, buying a home in Seattle over... The last several years has been tough environment for a buyer. Asking price keeps skyrocketing, but new indications suggest the tide is turning. Tough sellers still generally have the upper hand. The market is shifting to favor of buyers, especially along the West Coast where home prices were reaching levels of eroding affordability. So guys, you guys remember on my, my uh, trends in the housing market, we've been covering this for years, how the whole West Coast has been bought out from all the way from like Vancouver, Canada, all the way to the bottom of San Diego, Tijuana border, how the entire West Coast was being bought out entirely and how people were having a really tough time for affordability levels. And that's why um, there was a mass migration of uh, Californians leaving the state uh, for the last six years. Six million people have left California due to this. So that's what's happening with that. And then Oregon, people from Oregon, tipping point was 407,000. The affordability levels weren't there either. And then Seattle, people were leaving the city in droves uh, after the housing um, started hit the $540,000 mark. Okay, so we got here the Seattle area you can see here. And you got the strong shift towards buyers, which is pretty much the entire map. Okay, now let's move on to Texas. Remember, guys, I've been talking about Fort Worth, Texas becoming a big, big, big market. Uh, affordability levels are still there, and a lot of people moving to Fort Worth. But is Dallas becoming a buyer's market? No, you're gonna have the, you're always gonna have the media playing it as a buyer's market. They don't want to call it an affordability problem where people can't afford. And the houses in uh, Dallas went up, I think, up a, way up into the $400,000 range. And that just put a lot of people out of the market because uh, the average income in that area is only 79000 per household. Bloomberg. Bloomberg's uh, coming in. Mansions are piling up in Greenwich. Oh, yeah. Home buyers of the hedge fund Haven Greenwich are favoring smaller properties over sprawling mansions the Connecticut town is known for. So what is going on? Are they playing this off as a buyer's market? Uh, what is this? Uh, okay. Uh, once hot markets of Toronto and Vancouver, luxury home sales are falling, but they're up in Montreal. So again, Toronto markets and Vancouver luxury home sales are falling, but they're up in Montreal. And they kind of touch on it that is a buyer's market. And then this stupid financial post putting the stuff up here. Mortgage stress test is keeping Toronto home buyers on the sidelines, says real estate board. So the real estate board is blaming the, I guess, the stress test for doing its job and keeping people out of the market that can't afford to pay. Housing market dragged down as buyers in Southeast get jitters. Where is this? House prices. Uh, this is in England. House prices grew their slowest pr uh, pace in more than six years in February as the Southeast of England dragged down the rest of the market with the first fall in prices since 2011, according to official figures. 
First time, uh, first time buyer market continues to grow in the UK, says, says UK Finance. First time buyer numbers have seen annual growth for the fifth consecutive month. According to the latest data of UK Finance, there were 24,880 new first time buyer mortgages completed February 2019, 4.1% more from the same month in 2018. Guys, remember what's happening right there right now? They're doing interest only lower, uh, mortgages. Be careful, interest only. And when the, the banks start filling their books with interest only mortgages, it becomes a big liability to investors. And not only that, to the people that took the mortgages. And what's happening now, and they've been pulling a couple of things in the UK, trying to get people. There's been, there was also reports of some banks doing 100% loan to finance where you don't have to put any money down if you qualify. And that's become a big problem in the UK. And then here we go, Sydney. First time home buyers aboard crashing Sydney property markets. Again, Sydney's properties are becoming more affordable as prices fall, but the number of first time home buyers stamp duty exemptions and consensus have taken sizable drop more than 20% over the past year. New and new data shows. So people are shying away right now as they see it as a falling knife. And the looming crisis in the property market and what it means for buyers. Property is considered to be a long-term investment. A general consensus is given. Time in any structured growth of investment, one comes out in positive side of the ledger. The Australian property market enjoyed an unprecedented boom between 2012 and 2017 when prices soared over 72%. And uh, in Sydney, 56% in Melbourne. You saw the mass exodus of people leaving Sydney, moving to Hobart, and people moving all over the country to find uh, affordability. People making $100,000, $120,000 a year could not afford to, to maintain a million-dollar mortgage because the cost of living is a lot more expensive than it was 50 years ago. Adelaide and Sydney suburbs surge up in demand. List as buyers sniff a bargain. Guys, they're trying to hint a buyer's market everywhere, guys. Be very careful. Do your due diligence. Do your own research, guys. Do not depend on me. Do not depend on your real estate agent. Do not depend on nobody. Depend on yourself. Do your research, especially when you're buying the biggest asset of your life. Buyer's market emerging in Auckland. I don't think so still. Affordability levels are not. The average Auckland asking price is 942000 down from 960 a month ago. So guys, sit back if you're, if you're down in New Zealand. Please be just be patient. The world right now is in a buyer's market. So you're seeing it all over and you're seeing it in headlines. They're hinting out a buyer's market, they're sniffing out a buyer's market, and they're talking about it being a buyer's market. Is it, are we really in a buyer's market or are we in a real affordability crisis? That is the question I want to ask you guys. You see the headlines from the entire, entire Commonwealth. How the Commonwealth got into this mess, why? It's because they sold out to the highest buyers, the highest bidders, the highest, most influential and richest immigrants that came in and bought out the Australian, Canadian, New Zealand proper. Basically putting invisible handcuffs on anyone that wants to own in their own country and start a family. It's held families back from starting families. It's held families back from uh, people getting married, people pursuing a different angle in life. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think. Comment below, is the world in the buyer in a buyer's market? I'd like to know. Thanks for watching.